What is up and welcome back to another episode with our off-road Forester. If you guys were here last episode when we went off-roading, we went ahead and got our Forester stuck in the snow. And well, that's what brought us here today. After getting stuck in the snow, we went ahead and tried to get out of it and well, my Forester decided to throw a transmission code. What happened is it proceeded to flash the ATF oil temperature light, which usually is not a good sign. After checking the fluids, making sure they weren't burnt, and making sure we still had fluid, and then going ahead and throwing a scanner on it, we found out that it was electronic solenoid issue. So that is what we're going to be solving today. I don't know exactly what's wrong with it. I do have a little bit of an idea. It's obviously something to do with the transmission solenoid, so that's what we're going to be solving today. So we're going to walk through the troubleshooting steps, as well as hopefully the replacing and getting it all working again steps. So let's go ahead and jump into it. First, we're going to want to figure out what is the actual issue with the transmission. All we can get from our OB2 reader is it's electrical issue with sensor B or solenoid B, whatever that means. Looking at the service manual, they don't label it A, B, C, D, E, F, G, so we don't know exactly what that is. But thankfully, Subaru has a way to go ahead and actually pull the code from the car, not with OB2 scanner, but with the flashing light. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through the process of getting that and then figuring out exactly what's wrong and then hopefully figuring out the part we need to replace. And to be doing this, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using our gear selector here and we're going to be running it through a sequence of turning the ignition on off and as well as moving this on and off. And that's going to give us essentially the flashing light here at the dash. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. But first, let's walk through the process of doing this. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to run the car. We're going to go ahead drive it if you haven't drove it. I drove it into this garage so it was warm. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna put it into first when we're stopped. We're gonna go ahead, shut off the ignition. We're gonna go turn the ignition back on. We're gonna go into second. We're gonna go into first. We're going into second, third, and then you're gonna wanna pay attention to your transmission light and shift it into drive. And that's gonna start to flash. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna get, see slow flashes. This is your 10, so your one, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. These are your codes, and then it's gonna flash short for the ones. So your one, two, three, four, five. So if it flashes seven long pulses, that's gonna mean it's 70. And then if it flashes three short pulses, that's gonna mean it's 73. So we're gonna be watching our ATF oil light. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna run through that and see what light comes up on our dash. And well, looking at the flashes, it was 76, which is the 2-4 brake duty solenoid, whatever that means. But we do have a solenoid number. We can now go ahead, look that up on the parts diagram, and see exactly what solenoid that is. What happened to that solenoid? Who knows? What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, we're going to drop the, well, I got to drop my transmission skid plate. Then we're going to drop the pan. We're going to obviously drain our oil. I think we'll actually reuse that oil because this oil is like 5,000 kilometers. It's pretty new. Um, so I want to put it back in so we can use it a little bit more. Um, so we're going to drain that in a clean container and then we're going to go ahead, drop that oil pan or the transmission oil pan and see what that solenoid looks like. And there is my transmission skid plate. If you guys don't know when I'm running for skid plates, I would highly recommend you checking out my skid plate video where I walk through. Um, but this is a primitive racing one and it mounts like up in the back here, there's four kind of bolts that are pretty easy to get, and then there's was two. Um, this one is completely sheared off, so yeah, this is definitely seen uh, quite a bit of um, abuse, but look at this. So this was dented before. If you check out one of my old videos, you'll see that I dented this pretty hard when I was off-roading. It looks a little more dent because look at that. That is the... Um, corner that sits by the exhaust. It's all cut up now. Um, so I'm thinking that maybe when I was off-roading I hit something because I don't, I remember it being dented like that, but it was more of a like dent in the middle. But now it's kind of like pushed all the way up on this side. So I wonder, yeah, if we kind of push down we can see that it's kind of not flat anymore. So what I'm thinking happened is I might have hit another rock and maybe bent the solenoid, but we got this off. So now the next step is to go out under here and start removing the fluid from the transmission and then going about removing the pen itself. So I'm going to drain the fluid first and then we can go about removing the actual transmission pen in a minute. 
And well, we got the drain plug out and it is draining into the bucket. The fluid's actually darker than I was expecting for only like 10,000 kilometers. So we might actually just put some new fluid in after. But with that being said, it's time to go ahead and start pulling the pan. So I gotta go ahead and loosen all the bolts on the edge of the pan. And it looks like someone put a bunch of RTV because it's like orange and dusty. So I'm gonna have fun doing this. I will um, undo all those bolts, see if I can get any leverage on it and then if not we're gonna have to I guess get a pry bar in there and kind of be careful of the mating surfaces and just kind of work our way through there so I'm gonna get these bolts off and see if we even have a chance. With the bolts zipped out of the pan with the impact we now tackled removing the pan from the transmission. We eventually got the putty knife in and worked our way through. And well after working the putty knife all the way around three quarters of the way and then kind of just prying it down the rest, we got the pan off of the transmission. And there you go, you can see all the solenoids. And well, it's gonna be hard for you to see, but essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at that code that we had, which said it was that one solenoid, the duty 24 duty solenoid. We're gonna go ahead, look at a little diagram, and we're gonna go ahead and pull it out. As far as I know, it's this one right here. So we're gonna go ahead and pull it out. But as I said, it will depend on what that flashing light tells you and what solenoid it is. Usually it's a, if it's an electrical issue, it's probably the solenoid. So we're gonna go ahead and pull it out and then we're gonna do a little bit of testing to make sure that we've got the right one before we go ahead, find one and toss in a new one. So let's go ahead and it's just a couple bolts and pull out the solenoid. And well, here we go. Here is our solenoid that is supposedly dead. I am noticing if we look kind of here, it is almost bent. Maybe my skid plate didn't do as much protection as I think, and it knocked that just enough to maybe bend the connection. But we're not 100% sure if this is even the one, so let's go ahead and confirm this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a multimeter here, we're gonna put it on ohms, because all these solenoids will have an ohm rating. This one is supposed to be like 14 to 16. Uh, let's just make sure our multimeter is working. Yep, so we're getting that. Um, I'm gonna check, obviously, I'm gonna check like the grounding wire here. So put it here and here. Yep, so our grounding wire works. And we should be getting pretty much no resistance. Yep, we're looking good. Okay, now what we should be able to do, so this is ground, this guy kind of connects to the valve body, and then this, so this will be our ground, and then this is where it connects to the car, this little pink connector here. So, if this is dead, what should happen is I should be able to go connect this and we should see nothing happen. Just like that. So as I expected and as well, as we had the car kind of tell us, this is our dead solenoid. We are getting nothing. Nothing at all. And sometimes solenoids, depending on the transmission, might be open or closed by default. Um, this one I'm pretty sure is supposed to have some resistance value. And well, you have a few different options for replacing these solenoids. Unfortunately, new uh, not even from Subaru, from like an aftermarket transmission company. They're about $250 Canadian. Uh, you might be able to find them a little bit cheaper obviously in the States, but I don't even know what the price would be from a dealership because they're even more expensive than the aftermarket places. But I probably wouldn't do that just because they're so expensive. And well, we have some pretty readily available Subarus out at the junkyards here. So what I'll do is I'll go hop under a Subaru, um, pull the transmission pan off since I know how quick it is, and just pull a no new solenoid from it. <laughs> and well, just like that, we got ourselves a new solenoid. Just, as I said, I just went to the junkyard and pulled one off of another Forester, an 04 Forester, um, that was in the junkyard and it had a working solenoid. Obviously I did test it there with my multimeter and it is reading the correct about three and a half, four ohms, which we're looking for. I am looking right here at this pink connection compared to our damaged one. And well, our damaged one is definitely bent. So what I think happened is even though I got that transmission skid plate, what happened is it just was enough to, when I dro kind of dropped off or hit a rock in that snowy area, to just bump it up so that it bent the plastic connector because I have no reading on there. And when you have no reading like that, it usually means something's broken. And with it bent like that, it's probably that the main connection is broken and our solenoid is dead. So now we just get to go ahead and toss this in. But before we go and install the fresh solenoid, we have to clean up a few things. One of them being, well, the oil pan here. 
um, if you look, it's not that bad of a condition. The actual like material in there isn't much. For 400,000, I'm really surprised. The magnet's got a little bit of, well, magnetic filings, but it's not that big and there's a few little like gold flakes. But the pan itself isn't bad. Removing this pink stuff is going to be a pain. And same with under the car itself. So I'm using this scraping razor blade as well as well a wire wheel on a drill. And I'm just going to go ahead and clean this all off because when we apply the sealant, we're going to want it to be nice and sealed so it doesn't leak everywhere. So got to clean this off and then clean off the mounting plate on the transmission before we do anything else. I'm also going to just give this a clean, clean the magnet and just make sure it's all relatively ready to go. One other thing is I'll probably take a screwdriver and just hammer this little area here where it looks like it's dented in a little because well we don't want it to be dented in so we want to make it nice and smooth so I'm going to go ahead and also get that all ready before we can all throw it together. And with the pan cleaned and all the stuff taken off of the transmission itself using a wire wheel and a little metal uh, brush we got everything off. We don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves and start putting on the new sealant which I'll show you in a minute. We want to make sure that our new sensor or solenoid actually works. So what we're going to do is we're going to be using the two bolts that we use to take it off. Make sure you have the little metal rings on both this side and on the top side and we're going to be mounting this up and then using the nut to make sure that it is grounded to the transmission and we're going to test and see if that fix our code. Theoretically once we put this on we should be able to reseat the ECU and actually get the code clean. So we're going to go ahead and install this as I said, and then we can go check it. And well, with the solenoid in, we should be able to go ahead, we turn the key. Um, you don't want to start it up because that's gonna do bad things with the transmission, but I think we should be able to go ahead, foot on the brake and cycle through here. And what I'm seeing is I'm not seeing any flashing lights, so to me, that means that we're reading properly, but I'm gonna reset the ECU and do that one more time. And with us cycling the transmission once again with the keys on after I reset the ECU, I went ahead, read my codes, and we are good. We have no DCC codes even after cycling through. You can hear the, all the solenoids working. They're magic. And we can go ahead and see that our light isn't flashing. So what I'm understanding is it's communicating properly with the TCM and we are all good. So we can start to go ahead and button everything up. And with everything cleaned off, it's time to go install, well, our pen. So it depends what you want. There's a uh, Fujibon stuff that works great. We're not using Fujibon. We're going to be using uh, the right stuff um, by Permatex. I use this actually on my STI for the oil pan gasket. It works great. It's easy to use and it's uh, like quick, quick one minute gasket. So you can go ahead, install it, and then wait. I think it's like five minutes or something. Or it says return... Um, to service immediately. So you can use this stuff right away. I'm still gonna let it sit, but it's just really easy to apply, especially in one of this, and it seems to be pretty foolproof. And then for putting the bolts up, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're torquing them very low. It's five newton meters or like 3.8 foot pounds. I'm gonna use my torque wrench and just set it at the lowest setting and then watch that torque spec um, after I get them down. There is no pattern for this, so I'm gonna do crisscross. So I'll do one here and I'll do one there, do one there, do one there, and then kind of work my way around, um, just getting it up there and then eventually we'll be tightening it. For applying your Permatex stuff, you're gonna wanna run it in the middle here and then I run it on the outs or inside and then run it in the middle, outside, middle, outside. And then there's actually one other place you want to make sure you have Permatex on the transmission. There's three holes. You'll notice that when you take it off and you have the pink silicone in there, there's going to be three holes. You just want to make sure those are filled. I'm going to make sure they're filled with my um, Permatex Tech stuff, but you just want to make sure there's one front, one back, and then one kind of in the middle. But as I said, there should be already full, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. So yeah, let's go ahead, get this on, go ahead, put this stuff, let it sit, and then toss that on the car. With the gasket maker on the pan, we gave the transmission one more wipe down before we went ahead and attached the pan. Using the cordless drill turned down, we went ahead and attached the pan with the bolts. First in a crisscross pattern and then snugging them up before hitting them with a torque wrench. 
and with the pan on, it's time to go ahead and fill it. So make sure you're in the right ATF hole. There's a center diff on this side. Uh, make sure you're using the ATF one because you don't want to mix the two fluids or you'll have a bad time. And then what I found is mine's like 3.7 liters. Um, so it's going to be almost four of these. Of course, I'm going to be using the Subaru OEM stuff. This stuff's relatively cheap and it just gives you peace of mind that you know you're using the stuff for your car. Especially with these older cars, they get a little picky. So I'm going to go toss three and a half of these in, check the levels, see if we're leaking and go from there. And with fluid in the car, it's time to go ahead and actually turn it on and see what it looks like because it's hard to get a fluid reading when the car isn't running so we're gonna just run it for like maybe a minute check our fluid levels um, and see if we're leaking and then we'll have to take it for a drive before we actually go ahead and properly check the levels but I just want to see what it does when we give it a start success now let's see what happens when we put it in verse, dry, neutral, drive, third, first, there we go. We have a working transmission. So I'm just gonna let it kind of run the fluid through for a little bit and then we're gonna go ahead and see if we're leaking and see if we are good on fluid levels. And with it not leaking after doing our little test run there, I think it's time to go ahead, mount the skid plate, and call this a job done. And with the skid plate on, we're officially done fixing the transmission on my off-road Forester. So what we want to do is essentially drive 10 more kilometers, make sure we go through all the gears, and then park on a flat surface with the car still running, and check that dipstick once again. If you talk to anyone that's tried to figure out the volume on these transmissions and try to get that level right, it is an absolute pain. I might even do a little short on that because you guys, if you have dealt with these cars, know exactly how much of a pain it is. But checking the levels again after it ran, we're looking pretty good. So I'll do a little bit of driving and then just constantly check it for probably the next 100 kilometers, making sure we're in that range and topping it up if need be. And well, now we know what caused the transmission to go into limp mode on my last off-road adventure. All it took was this little piece getting bent on this solenoid in the transmission to cause it to go into limp mode. So hopefully this helped you guys go and navigate solving your issues with your transmission. If you guys did have a different code, you would want to go ahead and target whatever that diagnostic code is. But as I said, it's pretty common for those pans to get bent in and because of the position of this solenoid, um, it's the one that's getting bent a lot of times. It could be a different solenoid, but with that, those flashing lights, as I showed you at the start of the video, you can go ahead and solve it. And if you have any questions, or you do something different when you're troubleshooting an issue like this, let me know down below. And while you're down below, don't forget to check out the memberships and Flat 4 Off-Road, and I will see you guys, hopefully, in the next adventure.